what will you say to those um, crazy Democrats and candidates and think that Joey Grell is doing a good job? How are we going to convince them that she's not? You know what the election is right? Here's what the election is right now. The election is not between Jody Rell and the Democrat right now. You know who the election is between in most people's minds, don't you? It's between Jody Brown and John Rowan. That's who drives the numbers because most people's frame of reference right now is John Rowan. So what it is, is this. The primary, the, the primary I think, is a good thing, to be quite honest with you. You know, some of us don't like primaries. I come from the Haven, but I'm going to uh, I think the primary is a good chance to go out and define ourselves for voters. And, and the way to, to do that is frankly to talk about who we are and what people care about. I think this is going to be talking to voters about the things that they care about. And that litany that I started to begin with, property taxes, uh, talking about tuition payments. I mean, and I got two boys in college, right? You know? At the end of the month is a very interesting time in the house, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to, to make ends meet. I think it's people who see their neighbor's house going up on sale, who understand at some level that the fight for Sikorsky is about what health benefits are going to be or not be for those workers and those families, talking to them about those, those things. Jody is going to be telling voters that everything is okay. She's going to be selling that everything is okay. And you know what? In some parts of the state, things are okay. There are some good paying jobs in one part of the state. There, you know, there are in one part of the state uh, decent incomes that people aren't worried about about property taxes. It happens to be the part of the state that Jody Rowe is giving this car tax cut, uh, uh, cut to, and you know uh, what I mean. So I, I think it's it's talking to voters about that, and I think uh, it's about understanding where they are. I'll say it again. Four years ago, um, a year out from the election, the polls were a 46-point spread. 63 for Rowland, 17 for Curry. 63 to 17. By the time election day rolled around, it was 570,000 votes to 450,000 votes, right? 120,000 vote difference. By my math, that's getting 60,000 people to change their vote. Where are those 60,000 people? I just told you where 2,000 of them are. You know, I just told you where 2,000 of them are. They were the Shelton residents who went into the to the full voting place, voted R, and then voted Democrat the rest of the uh, uh, the rest of the way. You just get up to what Nancy Wyman gets. You still don't win the towns with Democrat, but you begin to put those 60,000 votes together. You know where those votes are? To be honest with you, they aren't in the big cities, Hartford, Bridgeport, and Haven. They're in the towns just outside the big cities. This may sound familiar. They're in towns that are growing, seeing a lot of housing development go on, on or near highways. They're in towns like the towns along Route 8, I-84, I-91, I-95. That's where they are. There are about 40 of them. That's who you target and you go after you know, you don't need to try to get everybody. You want to get the ones that are likely to, to give you those those votes. You run a message campaign that talks about who you are and talks about the things that voters care about. Voters are stressed because they're worried about making ends meet. You go out and you run a field operation that reaches out to those uh, to those voters. You raise the money to tell uh, tell 